maker and uh, I think that I specialize in making antique firearms and uh, the Kentucky dulcimer, the three and four string Kentucky dulcimer, known as the plucking dulcimer. They say practice makes perfect. I may not have learned yet, but I do what I'm doing just from uh, experience. I had an old friend, he was the former judge of Letcher County, Arthur Dixon. What I know, uh, he, he taught me all that one could teach one about something like that. You just have to have the skill and the determination to do it yourself. He's making fine rifles and pistols since 1968 and still aiming for the target of perfection. Uh, my name is Ruby Haynes Caudle, and you want to know where I live? <laughs> sure. It don't make no difference, I guess. I live at Carcassonne. I've, I've been doing uh, quilting a new craft since I was a little girl, my mother taught me. Uh, I make quilts and bonnets and aprons and dolls and crochet and embroider, hook rugs, or about anything you can do with a, with a needle. If I can't do it, I will at least try. It's just been handed down. My mother taught me to quilt, but uh, 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 one of my neighbors showed me how to make three basic stitches in crocheting, and from that I, I got patterns, and uh, they explained, the books do, how to make each stitch, and from that I can make about anything that you can crochet. Okay. I'm Florine Smith. I, I have been working in crafts really since I started as a child making things. Presently, I love to do quilting and patchwork cutting and sewing the quilt pieces. Now that's my, that's my love at this point. Of course, I do, do still do some woodworking, and, but I haven't done much in the last year or so. I think I've just got a, a knack for those things. I'm Earl Prophet. I was born and raised in Letcher County. I had a, an old coal miner for about 20 years, and then I got into carpenter work and plumbing, electrical work, and stuff like that, uh, working for the public. And I retired at uh, 62, I quit. And I got into making a lot of stuff, like hammer dulcimers, mountain dulcimers. I just pictured that myself mostly, man. Brother and I, and a uh, neighbor got into it here, and my brother retired too, and he decided he'd make a few, and and uh, really, uh, I knew pretty much about them because uh, my daddy bought one when I was about eight or ten years old, and uh, us kids, they just wore it out, you know, they didn't learn to play. And Hi, my name is Charles, Charles C. Hawkins. I guess I'm a cabinet maker. I learned how to make the cabinets just from having to build my own. I tried and tried to get the other people to do it, but it seems like everybody's so tied up with one thing or another that, that nobody wanted to do it. Or, and I wanted a good cabinet. So the only way I could get one was make it myself. So I practiced a few times on this and that and the other, and then I just started building them. Well, I'm James Bloomer. And uh, I'm a wood carver. I've been carving ever since I came out of service in World War II. And uh, mainly I've carved the last few years is uh, duck decoy size. And uh, I'll burn them with a burning pen. And then I'll give them a coat of minwax uh, over that, th three or four coats of minwax. And then uh, I make a lot of bowls, big bowls out of Buckeye wood and uh, I make them anywhere from five inches deep to two inches deep. And uh, I make a lot of fruit, apples, pears, bananas, and so forth, and just about anything in the carving line. I just took it up on my own. Uh, well, several years ago, there was a young man from New York, uh, a wood carver, came down to Blackie, uh, offering instructions to anyone that, to use the bigger gouges and chisels 
with a mallet, you know, and up until that time I'd only used a pocket knife on things and just just small uh, uh, figurines, you know. And then uh, I went down there and took his lessons for the biggest part of the winter. And uh, so ever, ever since that, I, I got started into the bigger things, you know, like the ducks and the, and the bigger bowls, you know. I started carving when I come out of service in World War II, about 40 years. 45, 50 years now. came about in a, I think the one probably most responsible for getting the thing started was Ann Bradley, the county extension office over there with the 4-H club and the Girl Scouts and whatever. I think she's the one that uh, had more or less got the thing started in the paper and, uh, and I think the first meeting they had over there, they only had just a few show up and the next one they had a few more and then a few more and now we're up to the point where we've got 40 over 40 members, and we've got them in Pike County, Leslie County, Prairie County, Knott County, Letcher County, and it seems like we're, we've even got a couple from Ohio. Well, I'm Ann Bradley, and a county extension agent for home economics here in Letcher County, and part of that uh, job includes working with local people in different projects, and at this particular time, we have been involved in getting a crafts co-op started for local craftspeople, and it's an uh, the name of it is the Pine Mountain Letcher County Crafts Co-op, and it's been organized for about three months now, and we have uh, a little over 42 members, I guess 42 or three members right now, and they cover a wide range of crafts. And would you like to hear what some of them do? We have basket makers and several quilters. We have doll makers, woodworkers. We have people who make jewelry of different types. Uh, quilts and pillows and just about anything in the crafts line we have someone in the co-op who makes it so we have a very talented group of people locally and it's been a fun meeting some people that I hadn't met before because of their interest in crafts it's a fun thing as well as part of my job yeah I got elected the director of that thing and that to me that's you know that's I can make it or I can sell it but I We'll see if we can't get this thing off the ground and develop it into something. I see it in the years to come as being a, a, if people really want to learn how to do some of the craft work where they'll have classrooms where people can come in, young people, and if they're serious about learning something, they'll have an opportunity to come in and learn as much as they want to about it. The people in the co-op are more than willing to try and teach some of the things. Now, some of the members we have are getting on up in years, and it's hard to find people that do the kind of craft work they do. And if it's not passed down in some way or another to the next generation, it's going to be something that's lost in these mountains and we will have lost a part of the mountain heritage. And I'm hoping that the co-op will serve in a way to, to continue on a lot of the old ways of doing things, whether it's making wooden toys or making a quilt or whatever it happens to be. Because we need to preserve as much of that as we can. Once it's gone, it's gone. Cooperation, I guess, which is the key to it. Everybody working together and, and uh, not having their own interest at heart. We certainly haven't done that at all. Everybody has the interest, uh, has the interest of their fellow craft makers, I think, to help them to sell and to see what they make. And we're, we realize we're going to all learn for each other. So I guess co-op means cooperation. It's a group of people with a common interest in uh, making crafts and in promoting the sales of crafts. and and learning from one another and having a good time doing it. I think it's a good thing. I mean, uh, uh, I wish it would grow into something uh, big, you know, and uh, it's created more interest. And uh, then uh, the uh, co-ops in general, as a rule, uh, will create uh, a lot of interest. And, uh, and then they uh, 
uh, advertise a lot for these things you see. And they get those groups together and it creates a, a lot more interest. How I got involved was I read it in the paper and then my cousin advised, said I ought to join. And of course then I did get a letter from the extension office uh, mentioning that they were starting this uh, co-op and I just felt like, well, I've got a lot of stuff made that I just, that'd be a good outlet for me. Whether it's making wooden toys or making a quilt or whatever it happens to be. Cause we need to preserve as much of that as we can. Once it's gone, it's gone. Yeah.